Lost on the High Seas, a serialized gay romance taking place aboard the ocean liner, the Majestic Star. Follow along as I bring everyone on an epic southern sea adventure with love, laughter, and possible destruction. Penned by Riley Mason, narrated by me, Brian Shepard. Episode 5. Worried or not to be worried. As Brian made his way through the ship, inspecting the furniture and upgrades, which were in full swing and should be completed by the end of the week, he kept looking down at his phone in his hands. The last text he received from Ben was the night before, and after not receiving a response back to his good morning text, Brian was starting to get worried. Before he left the bridge, his comms officer informed him that the star last reported that the storm had shifted course and now they were going to be sailing through it overnight. That was the last radio call from the star. Now all hails to the ship have gone unanswered. The weather might be playing a role in this, so maybe he shouldn't worry too much. The bridge was his last stop before he headed back to his cabin to shower and change. Now that he was informed that the CEO of Majestic Cruises was paying the son a visit, along with other board members. This was not uncommon, as the ship was recently acquired, was in the middle of a transformation. So it would only be fitting for the board and CEO to inspect the ship before it starts its new tour. Where that is, still has yet to be announced or even been talked about, which has Brian disliking the CEO even more. Johnny blew his first impression with Brian during the final signing when it came down to the ships. Johnny had made a nasty comment in the meeting room with his lawyer. Those who know Brian know that if you blow your first impression, you're done. Oh, yeah. That's right, Bob. Another gay captain. Let's see how long it takes before this one is shacking up with a passenger. Seems to be a recurring theme, Johnny. Although, if memory serves me right, weren't you dating? Well, an exciting day indeed. More ships to be adding to our ever-expanding fleet. Johnny cut in, out loud as Brian sat down at the table across from Johnny. It was too late, as Brian and his lawyer had heard the comment. So, right there, determined to Brian, he's a douchebag. Joey was right. Getting the past out of his head, Brian finished up and was heading out of his cabin as he was to meet them in the lobby at around noon. He had about ten minutes. Brian wasn't sure what they were expecting, as most of the crew were on shore leave while the ship went through its transformation. Yet, the ship was well on its way to being completed. So that has to account for something. The sun was to be the envy of European travel. Guests would be able to enjoy a slew of new amenities on board, while keeping the luxury feel and atmosphere, and the exquisite service the crew provides. This, of course, would not only benefit Majestic, Yet, Johnny would see this as a financial waste. The board came up with a figure that would be sufficient enough to cover the purchases needed for each project. Sadly, the sum of $1.2 million had Johnny seeing red. He was quick to shoot this proposal down, citing that there was no evidence showing loss of revenue due to outdated deck chairs. Why waste money fixing something that is not broken? Unfortunately for Johnny, he was outvoted and the proposal was approved, which now has Brian questioning what Johnny will have to say. The good thing about this visit is that board member Fiona Shackleton was joining him. Fiona is not a fan of Johnny and is not afraid to oppose him. This should be interesting for sure. Once Brian made it to the lobby, 
Johnny and Fiona had already made it on board. The visit should not take long, as they were here just to see the improvements and how they were coming along, and to be able to get a glance of this ship for the first time since its purchase. The dining room, kitchen, laundry, engine room, and a few cabins were on the list of potential places that they would visit. Those were considered project areas. To Jericho, it's a pleasure to see you again, Fiona said as she held out her hand. Taking her hand and shaking it, time to get this over with, she thought to herself. Miss Shackleton, Johnny, welcome aboard the sun. If you will follow me, I'd like to start with the dining room, he said as he turned and started to lead the two out of the lobby and down the grand staircase to the entrance foyer. The main dining room was one deck below. It seemed Fiona was impressed with the original decor in the staircase. The grand staircase was something that you would see on passenger ships that cater to the wealthy who would stay in first class. It was used not only as the central staircase from the top deck and down six decks, but was also the main entrance to the dining room, so it had to be impressive. What Brian saw was original craftsmanship, intricate details, and beautiful lights down to the clock in the middle. Navy blue was the choice of color for the carpet. The entrance foyer was the only section with carpet. Benches, chairs, along with tables, with painted vases filled with an array of flowers. Every ship has a staircase, each more magnificent than the last. To Brian, it's the history, the stories, and appreciation for the pride the builders must have had when the ship was completed. That, and you do not see this type of craftsmanship anymore. Ships are more modern and predictable. A bunch of prefabs put together. Of course, Johnny could care less. He was more involved with a phone call, as it seemed his cell phone was glued to his ear as he followed behind Fiona. Brian stopped before entering the dining room so Johnny could finally make his way down the staircase, causing an eye roll from Fiona. Brian should have just kept going, he thought to himself. This way he would be in and out, and good old Johnny would be able to leave. Welcome to the dining room. You will notice that all the old furniture has been removed and has re been replaced with a more modern, updated style that still coincides with the original design of the room. The carpet, which I am pleased to see go, has been replaced with hardwood floors. Brian pointed everything out as Fiona looked around and inspected the tables and the chairs, then walked into the kitchen, which housed a slew of new appliances and cookware. Johnny just stood in the entrance, still on the phone. By his facial expressions, he didn't seem to be too happy. More like angry turned worried. I must say the new designers did a fantastic job matching the new floor with the original woodwork in here. I am assuming it is this way in the cabins and suites as well, she asked as her and Brian walked back towards the foyer. Do you like to see one of the suites? As I'm sure they're completed. And yes, the bid that was accepted not only redesigned the rooms, they also did their own work and installed everything. The company uses wood that came from a family-owned sawmill in Norfolk, Connecticut. The builders here at the port were not necessary and could have been used for the star had they not been forced out to sea. I have yet to hear anything from Joey or Ben, trailing off, now that they were standing close enough to Johnny, who was walking in circles, asking someone if this was current and updated information, or old and a waste of his time. Must have been a very short answer, as Johnny simply hung up and slipped the phone in his pocket. Everything all right, sir? 
Oh, nothing serious. Seems the star's lost. Joey has not checked in, and all attempts to raise her seem to go unanswered. I have a feeling the weather is playing a factor in this. Last I knew, they were going into some bad weather. I, too, have not heard anything, which has me worried. Are they going to send out a rescue ship in case? What? A rescue ship? For what reason? What, to waste company money and resources over nothing? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm sure the ship is just fine. Now, I seem to have seen enough, so if you would excuse me, I have a pressing matter to attend to. I am very pleased with the work I have seen. Johnny then walked back up the stairs, grabbing for his cell phone to call God knows who. Brian and Fiona just stared at each other. This was madness. How can someone not be concerned for a ship that was considered lost, and even go as far as deny a rescue just in case? A douchebag would, for sure. Fiona, I don't like this, not one bit. Something is wrong here, and if I knew any better, Johnny knows and is doing nothing on purpose. I don't know anyone who does not send out a ship. The star does not belong in that area, and you know it. You're right. I was never in agreement with that decision. That's why he chose another board member to be in on that call. Someone he knew who would agree with him. As soon as it's possible for you to disembark, I would do so immediately. Recall your crew, Captain. I'm authorizing you to sail to the star. You don't have to tell me twice. I will walk you back to the lobby. I'll send information to the port as soon as we're ready to leave. Very good. Oh, and tell Benjamin I said hello. Smiling, Brian looked wide-eyed. Wait a minute. I hired him. So, of course, I know of this handsome redhead. Smiles and a handshake was all it took before both of them were on their way to the lobby, so Fiona could leave the ship and return to the office, and keep quiet about the sun going off to the southern sea. It felt like Brian was stealing his own ship, like Kirk did in Star Trek, only this time there was no risk of another ship following. The crew was finally on board, and preparing the ship to get underway as the port had cleared them to disembark at 2.15. Text messages and radio calls to the star still have gone unanswered, and yet the company still has not declared an emergency, which would hinder any rescue. The ship is ready to get underway, Captain. Good. Let's get the ship moving. Do we have clearance? Captain, we have clearance from Port Authority, Collins replied giving the green light to get the ship moving before Johnny caught on. He would want to know why the ship was leaving, which is probably why the bridge phone started to ring. Captain, it's for you, the crewman said as he held out the corded phone, which was attached to the back wall. This is the captain. Where do you think you're going, Captain? Your ship is not scheduled to leave port anytime soon, Johnny asked. Sorry, Johnny. I don't have the time to talk right now, but if you'd like to leave a message, please wait for the... And Brian hung up the phone. He just hung up on the CEO of the company, pretty much his boss. His hunch better be correct in that there was something very wrong with the star. Captain, the Port Authority is telling us to remoor the ship and to cut engines, as we do not have clearance. I already briefed you all on what the plan is, so I hope you all are still on board, because we are to continue. I'm not stopping my ship for no one. Brian was worried for his new friends, including Ben. He just met him. He knew and felt a connection. There was no way he was just going to let it go, and this was one of his colleagues who may need help. This would be easy for the sun, as it was designed to venture into this part of the world. Although ice really doesn't care if you have a double hull, 
if it wants to sink you, it will. Something Brian always keeps in the back of his mind. Hey everyone, Rylan here. Just a quick reminder that you can find more information about me and the stories I write by going to my Facebook at facebook.com forward slash author r dot mason. From there, you can find updates, follow me on Instagram, talk to me, and more. Thank you for taking the time to listen and for the support. An R. Mason Media Production. Copyright 2022.